Let's go, guys! How are we all doing? Yo. Wow. I just don't feel y'all match that level of excitement, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll try it again next time. Oh, my goodness. Uh, all right, guys. So uh, is this episode 22, 23, 22, I, I think, of Late to the Mic with our awesome guests, Emily and Ed from Snake Discovery. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello. Hey. How are y'all doing? We're good. We have the technical issues figured out, hopefully. So perfect. perfect. Emily just leaves. <laughs> Done. She's <laughs> literally right, like, she's like, well, that was yeah, fun. That was fun. I'm out. Yeah, yeah she's like, we had a good start, and uh, we're done. Yeah. You know, he was kind of mean at the beginning, and I just don't like that. So I'm gone. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Awesome. Uh, Troy, how's your week been? <laughs> hey, man, my week has been great. Um, you know, just uh, getting through it. I head to Louisville. If anybody's in the Louisville area, uh, you know, hit me up. I'm heading there for the weekend for a photography convention, actually. Um, and what really made my week was just a couple minutes ago when Canova Chase here uh, had to be reminded that he's not as big a deal as he thinks he is. <laughs> when <laughs> that very lovely Emily asked who he was and Chase had to remind himself that they have 3 million followers and Chase doesn't. And yeah, so, this... uh, very best part of my week. I love you, Chase. I'm going to be honest. You remind me this every time he sees me now. Every <clears throat> time I see no, you. I'm Chase... probably going to make a shirt about it with like Emily right here and you and just her pointing a <clears throat> finger and just says, who's that guy? <laughs> I, 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 I can't even begin to describe how happy I was when Emily said that. I was just, that was the best part of my day. It's so good. So Chase, fast. how is your week going? It's busy. It's super busy. Um, <clears throat> managed to ship this week. Yeah. Guys. Yeah, I, I didn't know we were going to openly talk about that, but I guess. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, it's, it's one of those things where if you've been doing this long <clears> enough <throat> and you know how you're packing your boxes, you and you, really, you talk to everybody, you can make things happen. And it's just all about watching the weather, talking to people at FedEx, looking at all the hubs. Yeah. And being informed at all levels. Not yeah, I mean, aside from all the major shipping companies specifically saying not to ship. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. But it's fine. We risk it for the biscuit. So your feet. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but we, I mean, we shipped as well. We shipped out 32 packages and uh, only one minor delay. So no complaints yeah. there. Uh, how was the feed? It was, actually, it was really good. Um, of course. Okay. Some, some adults were okay. You know, they, they can be iffy sometimes, but uh, the adult side did great. Perfect. Emily, Ed, how was y'all's week? Uh, it was busy. We've been moving a bunch of snakes. <clears throat> Uh, I had a shipping mis mishap today, actually. Oh, oh, no. I mixed up my labels. So oh. I've never done that before. Ed did it earlier this year. Yeah. Wow, so. she immediately threw you under the bus, Ed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, immediately. she was on the phone with the lady like, hey, we, we screwed up. We need to do you guys swap. Yeah. And I went. I was in the other room going, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I'm always terrified of that. And especially when we have big shipping days, you know, I always get really worried and I try and double and triple and I'm in the same boat as you, Ed, like every now and then my business partner will help ship. And I'm just hoping if something goes wrong, it's a package he touched. And I'm like, it's not me this time. But, uh, I'm so happy. So I feel that in my soul. Uh, did the, did the issue get resolved or. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. Everyone was very understanding. It was all the same. Okay. Species, just, just a bunch of baby uh, decays, brown snakes that we had. Okay. Born in our zoo. So one person was getting three of them. One person was getting one. So one person was very surprised when three popped out of her box and she received hers first. Yeah. So we just kind of created a group chat and coordinated with new shipping labels, kind of a, a switcheroo. So we're uh, they're in transit again, <laughs> and that's why we ship Wednesdays, I guess, and not Thursdays. Yeah, I, you so, know, honestly, I think we all are kind of the same. But we only yeah. ship on Tuesdays, um, just for that reason. Like mistakes happen, delays, whatever, you know. Last thing you want is a delay on a Friday, right? And then right. you go into the weekend and you're just praying to the gods and everyone knows the FedEx gods are vicious and not forgiving at all. Right. So, yeah, for no, even, even in like summertime when it's the nicest weather, I'm not yeah. on Thursday. It's just not worth, you know, mm -hmm. the animals sitting over the weekend at FedEx somewhere. It, it's just scary. Um, I already am worried enough when I put stuff in a box and trust FedEx to get it places. So, yeah. yeah. Um, do y'all ship a lot of animals out? Not this time of year. We ship okay. a lot during the spring, summer, fall, but just that's just because of how weather is up here. Um, we ship, I don't, I don't know, uh, in prime <clears throat> baby season, I would say 15 boxes is kind of our max. Yeah. 
but we're hoping 15 to 20 15 to 20 yeah but we're hoping to increase that with the new breeding facility which we haven't announced on the channel yet so anybody oh, who's no. is one of the first to know actually that we have a new reptile breeding facility that we've moved our collection to over the last week which is i think why i switched up labels is it was the last day of a stretch of 13 14 hour days and yeah. wow it's our first day off and we've definitely needed it first off guys troy chase we're a big deal now we got a scoop did you see that we got a scoop <laughs> this is exciting breaking news awesome dun, 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 dun. yeah no, that's awesome how big uh is the breeding facility about four thousand square feet whoa okay wow. that is not small I'm sure you guys probably have larger breeding facilities, but yeah. it's about mm. quadruple the space we were currently working out of with our private wow. collection in the small area we had dedicated to it at the facility. So I think this is really going to help. Uh, so are y'all wanting to expand the numbers as well? Or was this just y'all were cramming a ton of stuff in a small space and now just have more living space to work? We want to increase numbers. Uh, okay. We'd like to quadruple over the next couple of years the cool. amount of hog noses we have yep. and we're, okay. we're changing things up a little bit. We used to primarily focus on bull snakes and hog noses and then kind of a variety of other colubrids. And it seems like bull snakes just, they get so big, they don't sell as well as the smaller colubrids. So we're downsizing the amount of bull snakes we produce and trying to really increase the hogs. Okay. So with like the hog nose collection, are, are y'all doing mainly like pet stuff or do you also do some of the higher end projects? We do a little bit of both. Yeah. Currently, we mostly do the uh, pet stuff. Okay. Just because that's who's buying our our animals. Gotcha. Yeah. We found that if we breed higher end animals, it really reduces or limits your audience, especially with our viewers wanting, you know, their first pet hognose snake. Sure. Uh, there's probably limited budgets there, and they don't necessarily need a fancy Arctic watermelon, whatever hognose. So, oddly enough, we're going to try to focus on breeding more normal hognoses because it. I mean, I, yeah. I, everybody tells me they sell i mean i've heard that even just like normal hog noses sell like hotcakes so they oh, yeah. usually sell within 24 hours of us posting them so we're That's like incredible. if we can move normal hogs within a day once they're available we may as well do that rather than feeding high-end stuff for months before finally selling it but yeah that being said we still want to have some morphs that we produce yeah. because that's what makes the most fun egg cutting videos you can't just cut out a bunch of normals and have it be entertainment and i personally love the lavender morph so that's okay. probably the highest end along with some leucistic stuff we're getting into nice mm -hmm. that's yeah, cool so we're hoping to produce some lucies in the next couple of years yep. we've been producing some just kind of lavender stuff the last couple of years and everybody yeah. loves the lavenders just like we do <laughs> yeah it's cool I, and i think the leucistic stuff is going to be really good for the pet trade over the next few years um i mean it's a solid white snake it's awesome yeah so troy chase i need y'all to talk this episode you're not no, just I'm sitting sorry. there I saying nothing just, uh, it. i, I, I want to know yeah oh. i want to know all about the I was, silly and yeah, what I was guys, just, uh, no, no no i got so much crap last week because i asked too many questions and talked too well, much you're, you're the chatty kathy of the three of us it's nice. yeah i was gonna say uh, i've food, never though. seen patrick be quiet Exactly. Wow. It's pretty exactly. tough. It's actually, I don't even know why I use the word tough. I should have went with annoying, um, <laughs> but I don't want to hurt his feelings. You know what? That is hurtful on so many levels and mm -hmm. I am emotionally and deeply wounded and I may never recover from this. Good. Okay, good. Yeah. So we know where we stand. Yeah. Um, Emily, Ed, is it easier for you to tell us what you don't breed than us asking you what you do breed? Maybe. Yes. I don't know. How yeah. do we summarize what we do breed? North American yeah. colubrids and various exotic colubrids. I think sums up most of it. <clears throat> we, balls. we bred one pair, one clutch of ball pythons. Yeah, so now we're like, breeders. we're officially Ooh. snake breeders now. Yeah. You, welcome to the club. It's You're big in. leagues now. What was the pairing? It was supposed to be a... Oh, no. Oh. Hmm, drugs were involved. So it was so. <laughs> I'll get into that in a second. Oh, I'm ready. I'm for it. super excited. <laughs> I hope it came from Daniel. <laughs> it was supposed to be a pastel special to a banana, and it okay. ended up being a pastel special female to a spider banana. And you know, our our opinions. We understand why some people might like the spider morph and all that. We prefer just not. We choose not to breed it ourselves. We're not going to judge some judge somebody if they do do work with it though. Uh, but what happened was 
during the pairing season, we had paired our pastel female to this male banana several times. And I had recently had my nose surgery and I had already booked before my surgery was scheduled a birthday party at our facility in our like classroom to be scheduled for four days after my surgery ended up getting booked for. So I was on, I had to do it because it was already booked, this birthday party. So I was on some pretty heavy painkillers. I was on some strong painkillers at the moment. Nice. I still had stitches all over and like a cast mm. on my nose. So I packed up all the snakes I needed for the show and I went to the classroom and I did the program. And when I was putting all the snakes away afterwards, so we were currently pairing this pastel with a banana. The banana was off site doing like a library program at the time. So my backup ball python to use in programs is this spider banana that we uh, took in from our rescue. So I was using him and I think because of these dr drugs, uh, I was in a weird funk. Program went great. Kids loved it. But did you get tipped? I did not get tipped oh. for that program. I know. Oh. Didn't even get a tip for that birthday party. But it's okay. I mistook the uh, ball python to be the one thinking it was the one we were supposed to pair. So I put him oh. in. Oh, no. And then our educator came back with all of his snakes, which included the actual banana that we were trying to pair her with. Yeah. We went to put him back or put him with her and realized that they were already locked up. So it's amazing how fast ball pythons lock up. I actually did not know they did that that fast, but it, it can be. It, it, so, it, it's it's depends on the boy. <laughs> yeah. Some, it depends on how eager the boys I've got. A, I've got a couple of males in right now that have been in with for a female for three days and they're just now locking up. And then you have those, yeah. like you said, it's instantaneous. So <laughs> I paired 20, uh, 20 animals, I think uh, Tuesday night. And so far six have been locked. So <laughs> Well, that's just because you have garbage animals, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, tonight is a great night to go pair uh, for us. Those storms. Oh, so good. Anyway, yeah. hold on. Let them finish the story. Sorry, banana spider. Oh, yeah. Go. So we, after they were done, we separated them, put them in the appropriate bins. And we had figured, well, this pastel had paired up successfully with this banana multiple times. <clears throat> what are the odds that uh, the sire is going to be that spider banana? And sure 100%. Enough, it <laughs> happened. We got a couple spiders in the mix. So we're like, well, when I would know who the sire is, but it's all yeah. good. It worked out. We just, you know, taught our viewers a lesson. Don't do drugs and breed snakes. <clears throat> yeah. So that was the moral <laughs> of the story. Wow. Um, that's the for the story, shirt, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that should be a snake discovery shirt. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Don't breed snakes and do drugs. Yeah. Well, what if I do them separately? Is that okay? No, we're still not doing so. that, guys. Yeah, it's still not yeah. supposed to do for that any, either. For any okay. kids, for any kids listening, Patrick, you should yeah. not do drugs. Drugs are bad <laughs> unless they're prescribed by a doctor, and then they should be used limitedly. Not a doctor like Patrick, an actual doctor. <laughs> Wait, no, but I am a medical a, degree. I, I am an actual doctor. What? We're not doing this today. You, you've you've hurt me already <laughs> once. I can't do this again. Ugh. I can't cry again. Hmm. Uh, good fun times. Um, <laughs> can we do some off track with Troy stuff and get it out of the way? No, I was going to wait this way. time. We did it early last time. We're going to do it late this next time. Okay. Okay, go Troy. <laughs> I don't. I don't ever know what to do. Sometimes I feel like we really should probably have an outline for this show. No, no, we did have an outline <laughs> no, once. Did. Yeah, do you remember? I had the outline, and we tried to follow it, and you ignored it blatantly. You went off track with yourself. Yeah. Wait, why? Okay. Anyways, I'm going to go back to my friends. Ed and um, mm, Troy's off hey, Troy. questions are going to be goofy. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask you this. Ed, tell us about the first time you saw Emily and everything you experienced and felt and went through and all that fun stuff. Uh, wow. He was too scared to talk to me. <laughs> I had to talk to his dad. That's Troy, a, come on. Yes. You heard me like that. That is I adorable on so many levels. I, I love that dynamic where Emily immediately will just run it over on a, with a bus. Oh, exactly. so great. Yep. She's fast. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> yeah. So um, like, where were you well, when you saw, saw this lovely lady? So we met at PetSmart. So my family was, had a friend who had a blue and gold macaw that they didn't care for anymore. Basically they fed it, watered it and left it completely alone. Well, birds need a lot of attention. Um, so we went through, every time we would go there, there was no kids my age. So I just went into that room and was fascinated by this giant bird. So they noticed that and went, you guys want this bird. You, Ed gives it more attention than it gets all year long. So we went and picked it up 
And then we got home and went, we don't know how to take care of a blue and gold macaw. Fair. <laughs> we went to PetSmart and asked for the resident bird expert, and that was her. Okay. And then I just went, nah, I'm not going to talk to a girl. <laughs> I'm 16. <laughs> I can't oh. talk to women. <laughs> yeah, talk Actually, to I married her because then I didn't have to talk to any women after that. <laughs> wow. So y'all are high school sweethearts. I think you were 19, I was 18, but we oh, are each true. other's first yeah. boyfriend, girlfriend, which is really <laughs> lame to <laughs> say. Push back under the bus. You were 19. <laughs> All right. All right. 19. You first you fell in love. I love it. First, first boyfriend, girlfriends. This is great. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Now we're married for 10 years. Wow. Congratulations. All right. All right. So we're almost 30. I wish I'm 32. He's 33. We're old now, guys. You're yeah. bad at math. Troy. Uh, they said 19 and 10 years. They didn't say they, got, they, they didn't get married at 18 and 19. <laughs> as got, soon as I talked to her, we got married. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, I'm used to people in Iowa. We just get married the minute you fall in love. So, <laughs> okay. Wow. That uh, explains yeah. a lot about that state. A whole lot. <laughs> so Ed, how, did, how, did, how did you propose to her? Ooh. Uh, so we started dating uh, 12 days before Christmas. So for our Three-year three year anniversary, I started giving her presents. So, like, the first one was a uh, partridge in a pear tree. I don't remember what I did. Of course it but was. then I did <laughs> all the way up to five golden rings. Yeah. And then I gave her, like, a golden spider ring leading up to going to a park in the middle of winter with a ton of snow on the ground, giving her her uh, ring and... I never even got oh. down on one knee because it was snowy and cold, and it was we a bad idea. We were supposed to. We agreed <clears throat> there. You're like, if anyone asks, I got down on one knee after oh. I said yes. Okay, so it, you four or you Ed, three, <clears throat> and then everybody listening. No one's. No one this. watches this podcast. You're good. Uh, Ed, I'll share a secret with you that only my wife knows. I also did not get down on one knee uh, for <laughs> a makes, very. That makes another one of us. Oh, oh, oh my God! None of us did. My proposal, though, was in front of a uh, 20-foot Burmese python, so, you know, I think there was a lot of prelude there to what was coming. She didn't know it, though. Joke's on her. Yeah. Um, Chase, okay. did you get down yeah, on one man, knee? I totally what a both. bitch. Um, yeah. Whoa. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. Yeah, Here it is. I, uh, it slipped. I'm sorry. I Kids, up. don't say bad words. So, my wife, <laughs> uh, I was a zookeeper at Memphis Zoo, and um, I surprised her with all those other zoo girls, I had them in on it in front of the zoo on her oh. lunch break. Oh. And uh, yeah, made a big deal of it. So, oh, that's so I know, sweet. I know. I made my wife ugly cry in front of everybody at the zoo. So. While she was covered in animal mess and everything else. That's yeah. so romantic. You're a good guy. Covered in animal mess. That just so gives such a great visual. Well, I mean, you Patrick know. has seen my wife at the zoo. It's okay now. Like <laughs> she's, she's part of the crew at this point. It's, it's good. It's good. Uh, all right. Well, I'm glad to know other people didn't get down on one knee. There's probably a lot of judgment right now from from everybody, but you know what? The secret's out. It's good. Yeah. It's fine. I didn't even ask Lisa, "Hey, do you want to get married?" I have showed her the ring and said, "You want to do this or what?" <laughs> get in and, the truck. <laughs> yep, in the trunk. Yeah. On, on the porch of her steps <laughs> in a very cold, cold January night uh, when we were very young. Mm. And we'd only dated for three months. Anyways, that's a long story. Wait, um, uh, we all proposed within like a month of each other too. Because I proposed December 4th. And Ed and Emily were also December, right? Would have been December yeah. 16th, somewhere yeah. around Yeah, there. somewhere in that range. And then Troy, you're in early January. Look at that, guys. This is beautiful. It was meant to be. Yeah, Good. yeah. yeah. meant to be friends. Um, <laughs> Emily, if you had to replace your husband with a celebrity, who would you have married? Ryan Reynolds. That's absolutely oh, that's the right quick. answer. No, that, that's absolutely the right answer. Man, There's no other good answer. Don't deny he's not on all of your lists. Oh, so wait, absolutely. I would leave my wrong. wife in a heartbeat for Ryan Reynolds as she would leave me, and it is fine. Yeah. Do you, uh, mm. Ed, Emily, you guys know JD from JD Constriction? Yes. Yeah, we met him right? at one so, of the shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we think JD looks like a fat Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> you, you, from what you remember, right. do you agree? Mm -hmm. I, up a picture. I can see it. It's bringing up a picture <laughs> on his computer right yeah, now. Yeah. Find, yeah, he, go, find he John definitely, on Facebook or something. Yeah. yeah. JD can search you. find him. Probably find a picture of us together somewhere. JD uh, definitely right. has, a, has a fat Ryan Reynolds look. It's good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's uh, it's pretty good stuff. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, you should Emily, use Google Images. There's a lot of weird images when you oh, that. Okay, we're gonna yeah. go to oh. Facebook and try this again. We should we should see what you see, kids. <laughs> I don't kids. think we should. Kids, log yeah. off. Yeah, we can't uh, trust Emily, kids googling. You, you started at at PetSmart, and now you're uh, more well known than PetSmart is. Uh, <laughs> can you walk us through that journey? Uh, sure. So yeah, I was I worked at PetSmart. It was my high school slash college job, and it turned from just part time to full time management position. Oh, he does look like it. a chubby yeah, Ryan Reynolds. As soon as Ed sat back smiling, I knew he was like, "Yeah, I see it." Wow. <laughs> he even has like a facial expression just like Ryan Reynolds. Okay, someone needs to I'm Photoshop. I'm totally gonna Ed, clip this part and send it to him later. Ed, I think you're in trouble. You might you might lose Emily to JD. It's it's unfortunate. I was just but... gonna say like if you had to settle for a look. Like would fat JD would that work? <laughs> that would work. Yeah, I could compromise. Right. You could tell people he used to look like more like skinny Ryan Reynolds or something. Well, the funny thing yeah. is, Ed quite often gets fans who tell him or tell us that he looks like um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. What's his name? Oh, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. You got the vibe for sure. Yeah, yeah, I could see, see that. Chris Pratt when people ask you that question. Oh, right. So if somebody asks, what celebrity would I marry? Yes, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. That's why I have you. Except he's Christian and weird. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> no, you know oh, what? Let's go right. down that boat. I'm in because I agree. Oh, the, oh wait. No, we don't want to. Never mind. We'll talk we about this talk later. We don't talk about politics or religion yeah. here. That's Patrick. true. We don't. You're right. I made that rule and I need to stand by it. And, I'm Christian too. And, but... <laughs> Yeah, but Chris Pratt got weird. Anyway, we'll talk later. <laughs> Not <laughs> as weird as Tom Cruise, I bet. Um, uh, I would argue maybe on par. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, tell us about your, your journey. Sure. So I went to college uh, at the University of Minnesota, got my bachelor's in fisheries and wildlife, and it pretty much trained me how to be a wildlife biologist. But throughout my time in college, I realized I'm a really big cold baby. So I switched from outdoor herpetology to <laughs> indoor keeping of reptiles. And having worked at PetSmart for about a decade at the time, I really was familiar with keeping reptiles as pets. We had gotten a, uh, an albino ball python together. Yeah. That was his first snake. Uh, so we were already dabbling in reptiles a bit. But I took a job that was a temporary summer position for the DNR where I was an interpretive naturalist. So I basically created programs to connect people to wildlife. Mm -hmm. and it, was a, it was a lot of fun, but it was a temporary position. So after it ended, I had to kind of figure something else out. And I realized I really did enjoy teaching people about wildlife. And we also have a passion for reptiles. So we kind of put two and two together and developed a traveling reptile show or program. So that was the start of snake discovery. So we would bring reptiles to libraries and scouts and schools and teach people about them. And it started getting pretty big to the point where I was doing about 350 programs a year. So wow. during the busy season, which is June, July, and August, when summer or school's out for the summer, I would have, say, four programs in a day at different libraries. So I'd finish one and have a family approach me afterwards saying, oh, my God, I love the snake you brought. We want one now. How do we take care of it as a pet? And I'd be like, oh, my gosh, that's quite the question. I would love to answer it, but I have to be at my next library in 20 minutes, so I can't answer that question. So we started developing educational videos to defer people to when they had those questions. So it was really a way for us to help people out when we didn't have the time to, because we were running around doing programs and then it <laughs> kind of took off on YouTube. Wow. That's actually yeah, really I mean, cool. Yeah. That's super awesome. How organically that, uh, that came to fruition there. It was yeah, something Ed, we were never expecting. Ed, Ed, what were you kind of, what were you doing kind of up to that moment where things kind of took off with, with Emily and, teaching and stuff yeah i was working it at a dental consultation office so basically we did dental it work oh so All the right, transition so was IT very guy. smooth and natural there that makes yeah. sense yeah. i like that you're an it guy and a famous youtuber <laughs> and you couldn't get your phones to work tonight <laughs> man hey wow <laughs> I like how we have the crappiest camera feed too, and we're YouTubers. <laughs> how does it feel to gonna, get I run over this anything. many times in 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 what twenty five minutes? I mean, uh, I mean, we filmed our 
our first videos were just filmed on our phone and I used Windows Movie Maker yep. on my computer to edit them, which is what I'd recommend for anybody trying to start a channel. Yeah. Use your phone and use free software uh, to, to edit. Uh, but that's, yeah. that's where we started. Yeah, that's awesome. Are you guys uh, are you guys using any AI uh, editing stuff at the moment? Or are you guys kind of still have somebody kind of edits, edits everything for you together? Or? I edited all the videos up until about two years ago, would yeah. you say? Uh, and then we hired a full-time editor to take all the footage, edit it down. I review version one and I give feedback like, hey, can you change this? Hey, can you add this caption? Hey, skip this part. It's irrelevant and so on. And then he does all the tweaks and then I upload version two. <clears throat> but I don't do the full editing myself unless it's something I want done in a very specific way. Can we right. hold on? I'm going to interrupt for half a second. We just broke 100 viewers for the first time, boys. Nice. Oh, wow. That's Guys. nice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, you don't, I hope you don't mind. I was on my phone earlier to share it on like Facebook. Oh, no. Channel, that's awesome. So I hope awesome. that's okay. No. No, that's fantastic. We appreciate yeah. it. We're, yeah. Hey, we're happy to use your popularity to try to grow our channel. Absolutely. <laughs> what are we at? <laughs> Yeah, how, we're sister. at 104. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you guys so, for listening. Yeah, we, guys, uh, thank you. We have this is like, fantastic. We have, we have so Emily, like where we are, right? We have 456 subscribers. What what was that Pretty journey like? Deal. As far as uh, you know, going from a hundred to a thousand to a million to three million, like how's that journey? Like, tell me, walk me through those emotions. You know, it's hard to comprehend, I guess, over a hundred or so people watching your videos. I don't know. It's, it still doesn't feel like 3 million is like different than when we were making videos for a thousand viewers. Interesting. We want to teach people about reptiles when it really hits you is, and it's so humbling. We go to these reptile shows like the NARBCs and having a meet and greet line. It's like, oh my gosh, we're, people actually enjoy our videos, but we're just <laughs> geeking out about reptiles and people like it. So it's, it's very humbling like i said so exhausting it's, when y'all show up to shows oh my god yeah it's so neat though to watch that from <laughs> like i think fantastic. from all of our yeah from our ass like from where we are it's it's neat to see the kids run around chasing you and and uh yeah. you know making this huge line and you guys are out there for hours on on end and uh i i i applaud you and i know people bring you treats and and I want to ask you about that, but I also want to tell any of your followers that are listening, if they happen to come to Tinley and they want to bring extra treats to the best dressed balls table, <laughs> I am fat and I will eat them. So <laughs> just throwing it out there. Troy, um, I don't think Troy you're supposed to. I don't think you're supposed to eat internet stranger candy. Yeah, that's no. no they get good specifically, stuff. Bring them wonderful. What's what's the best thing you've ever gotten from a from a a, a follower, a friend, a. Oh man, that's so hard to think. Ed is a big fan of the whiskey. So that oh, yeah, I've fans... got three bottles of whiskey so far. What? I'm hoping right. for more. And he's a big <laughs> okay, whiskey hoping, guy. He's hoping for more, everybody. <laughs> wow. Uh, Ed loves trying new whiskeys. Yeah. He has a whole. Actually, that's what is on the desk right now. Is a, what I was gonna ask, but then I was like, I'm not gonna bring it up because you know, with uh, yeah, alcohol. Ten year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ten year. Okay. Nice. nice. Yeah. Didn't I just see you guys put out a video like somebody sent you watches or something? Yeah, actually, I'm wearing it. Yeah, so I don't think Ed has his on right now. Right but now. yeah, it's a, a mystery fan from, I believe, Washington, who we don't know because he never shares his name, has sent us watches for our anniversary. So hopefully so we get like, to meet Right now, sometime. that watch probably has some type of like uh, spy pro. It's, it knows where you are. Absolutely. <laughs> you, probably, you probably shouldn't have that on in the bedroom. I'm just saying. It's oh, recording things. I didn't say anything you wrong. Want to see anything here, <laughs> Ed? You are a beautiful person. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Our hey. fans are very generous. Very. Wow, nice. that's fantastic. That's yeah. awesome. That's Ed, fantastic. Do you, ever feel, uh, do you ever feel like you're second place? All the time, but I like being second place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see the Ed's line like, she has to deal with. It's like I'm yes, good with dude. the coattails. <laughs> yeah. Everybody comes up to me and they're like, well, I didn't really want to wait in the line for her, but you didn't have a line, so I'm going to come talk to you. I'm like, nice. Do you ever have anybody, Ed, that comes up and says, hey, you know, Emily's okay, but I actually really follow everything because of you. Do, you. do you have a couple people that are Ed I think fans I had like Emily? five to six people tell hold, me that. Hold on. I We need to be clear. I specifically asked for Ed to come on this show, not Emily. I want that to be known. You I did. said I was gonna. I was gonna tell her that. Yeah, she just failed. So, Ed, I want you to know you have at least one fan here. Ah, 
Yeah. And I won't yeah. even respond to your messages. No. Oh, it's, so, it's so true. It is hurtful on so many levels. Uh, you haven't sent me yeah. any messages, have you? Well, no, because you don't respond. Okay. So. See, it worked. Yeah, it was good. Well done. You trained me. Good job. <laughs> I was like, hey, are uh, you all going to be here? No response. Okay. <laughs> and that's taken. Great. That's just yeah. how Ed works. He know it's not just you, Patrick. Don't worry. Oh, I didn't take it personal. It's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I cried. No, I didn't take that from Ed personal. Uh, quick funny story. So the first time I met Ed and Emily was when they flew over to Virginia to film a video, and we were eating dinner that night with uh, Ben from RGI, and Emily's talking about the reptile show or reptile stores in or pet stores in general in Richmond that they were thinking about going to. And I was like, Oh, I wouldn't recommend that one. I wouldn't recommend blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, you know, if y'all do want to see like some ball pythons, like y'all are welcome to come out to our facility. And guys, the look that Emily gave me was like, this dude's going to wear our skin. Like we had just met. <laughs> it was like this look of like, mm -hmm. and then she just like immediately moved on. And I was like, all right, no taken. Got it. This went poorly. It was delightful. I loved it so much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got the same feeling no, for me. no, no, Emily. And there's nothing to apologize. It was one of those things where it's like I think sometimes, and kind of like what happened with Chase earlier. Like in our own little world, we're we're fairly well known, and so like if I'm like, hey, do you want to come back to the facility? Like people are like, yeah, absolutely. And I said it to you, and you're just like, mm, no one cares about ball pythons. It's like fair enough. <laughs> I loved it. It was so good. It was a great moment. So you know what? I would expect Emily to ignore my messages. Maybe not Ed, but it's fine. It's okay. Breaking his heart, Ed. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I'll get through it. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Boy. Yeah. Do you? Did the two of you have any like uh, like funny traditions you do with each other? Anything like that? We have the creepy toad we hide around the house. That's oh, that is hot, and I'm excited to hear about that. Go. So we received from somebody who we aren't really connected to anymore a poorly taxidermied cane toad that's like 50 years old. And it's creepy as all get out. And we'll tuck it in random cabinets to throw each other <laughs> off guard and get create nightmares for the other person. I don't know where it is right now. I think one of us Hold did on. it too well. I'm going to yeah, be right back. I'm going to show y'all what my, my wife and I do something similar. I'll be right back. Y'all keep talking. I'll be right back. All right. Thank God we got rid of Patrick. Hey, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Been waiting to get rid of him since day one. <laughs> uh, so what about uh, – so that sounds pretty fun. Like um, – what else, like what outside the out of the zoo, outside of snake shows, outside of doing YouTubes, what else is Ed and Emily into? Uh, lately, well, it's funny you ask. As of today, there's that new game, uh, Pal World. Pal World. Oh my gosh, that's all I hear we about from five everybody. Hours of that today. We tried it for the first time today, and it's amazing. It's just like Ark, but with yeah. like knockoff Pokemon. Uh, yeah. So before we knew it, five hours had gone by yeah. today. Uh, so oh, we, we, funny. Yeah, uh, we Ed's a big gamer, I would yeah. say. I'm I try. more a book reader. Yep. All right. Ed, in your entire life, from, from you know, five, six-year-old or something, maybe when you start playing games to now, what's your all-time favorite game? Probably one of the Halo series. You're very good okay. at that. Good yeah. answer. Halo yeah. 2 was probably the game I wasted the mono, most amount of time in. All right. Emily, what about you? You, you got a favorite game? Uh, currently I would say Beat Saber, where one. Yep, uh, you have like lightsabers, it's a VR game, and you're like hitting blocks to the rhythm of music. I was a huge DDR person, where you like step on the arrows yeah. it, with the rhythm of the, yeah, to the beat. Uh, but growing up, I guess for longevity reasons, the Pokemon games, I have played almost every generation. I think I skipped Diamond and Pearl, but I've yep. played every other generation. It's uh, funny, was, like... Like hearing that from you guys and, and knowing that Chase is kind of into gaming, his brother's into gaming and stuff. And, and I'm older than all of you quite a bit. Uh, and so my favorite game is Pitfall, which you played on Atari. And uh, nice. all time favorite game. And and if I could play Pitfall on Atari stuck on an island the rest of my life, I'd be happy. So um, I love I love hearing like that question and then like you guys answering it with like these newer games that I have no idea what you guys are talking about. So Chase, what games do you play? Um, not many anymore. Uh, I stay so busy at the facility, but when I did, it sucks I getting hard, old. like the Black Ops 2 era, like, okay, I spent way too much time <laughs> and late nights just not sleeping and playing that game. But, um, I'm trying to actually make 2024 a year where I, um, I slow down a little more and 
I've actually been playing with my family like Minecraft uh, again, oh, nice. just like Minecraft or League of Legends, just, you know, CSGO. Games kind of slow down, hang out with my siblings online because they, they both live in other states. So okay. just an extra way to connect and uh, try and get back to that kind of base where we all used to hang out together. Nice. Uh, have you yeah. have you tried Pal World? <laughs> Mac is a one. Just talk to you about that. Well. Way to be away from your screen. I'm sorry. Sorry. Whoops. Okay. Ignore that. Wait, so y'all are playing Pal World? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are. And uh, how, how much do you love it? It's, it's amazing. It's incredible, right? Yeah. You played it too? Oh, absolutely. We just started today. And before we knew it, I was just saying five hours were done. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, we've been playing it for the past couple of days with the group that I play with. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, Pokemon with yeah, with guns. I mean, how much better does it's it get? That's exactly how my brother described it. He's like, Chase, you have to play. It's like Minecraft yeah. and Pokemon with guns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your, your brother's in the comments and, and your lovely sister, of course. And so I feel like we've got your whole family here. It'd be really cool if Chase <laughs> and your parents popped on here. <laughs> be good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ed and Emily, you know, people, people make a little bit of money off of YouTube. Would you rather make money playing games or, or what you're doing with YouTube? I would say YouTube because I honestly I enjoy the education doing. aspect. So yeah. Yeah. I feel like we're doing good for the world by teaching people. I think it would get really old too, like playing games eight hours a day. Cause the gamers have to stream and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I feel like, if you're dedicated being every day, you know, it's every hour you're away from Twitch, you're losing subscribers. It's that's a grind. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Yeah. It feels like a real grind at that point. Right. Real grind. Oof. Nice. I get bored yeah. after about two hours of playing a game in all fairness anymore. <laughs> at this point, I would do just about anything to make money. Look at that. Only fans. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not my studio. Yep. Yeah. I, I will give you a deal. <laughs> That's that's not how you want to start the that's, OnlyFans account yeah. like with deals. That is right not off a positive bat. start. We are. Yeah, I'm pretty broke. I'm just looking to make some money. Patrick, leave me alone. You're uh, you're a ball python breader. How are you I'm broke? I'm a ball python breeder. Yeah, yeah, they're all we're all millionaires, right? That's how this works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No? You guys have uh, <laughs> you guys have furry pets, cats, dogs, a mm -hmm. llama or something. No, I'm allergic to most furry animals, which is how I got introduced to exotics, I guess, in the first place. At our house, we have, just on the other side of the screen, just three rattlesnakes. We have our macaw and a 200-gallon freshwater aquarium, and that's it at our house now. I like j just three rattlesnakes. It's, it's really not much compared to what we used to have in our house before yeah. we moved. <laughs> I've been following the uh, venomous guy on TikTok. I want to say he's in Missouri, maybe. I, I, and forgive me if I don't know his name here, but uh, man, wild stuff. And I, I know that you guys have some rattlesnakes and whatnot. Like, uh, what do you all have at the zoo that's in that rattlesnake category of things? Yeah, the two rattlesnakes we have at the zoo are a timber rattlesnake, since they're native to Minnesota, and a western diamondback, just because we got her in as a rescue and then... She just basically stayed. We wanted to put Massasagas because those are debatably <laughs> native to Minnesota. But the ones we got were like that big and could sneak out. So we we're like, we're not going to deal with that in the zoo. Oh, God. We'll, we'll put the Western Diamond back in there for now. <laughs> yeah, so we're raising up right. Massasagas in our office here. And then we have just another Southern Pacific rattlesnake that, that came with the diamond back as a kind of a rescue again situation. Mm. So those two, we didn't necessarily want or need, but I don't know where else to yeah. go with them so we don't mind taking care yeah. of them in the meantime what uh, what's it like working with uh you know that scary of an animal i think they're so cute oh my god the massasagas are adorable that we got them when they were first but they were born in our garage and they you know first born they don't have enough segments on their rattle to actually rattle so it was like i feel like the equivalent to watching your child walk for the first time when they had <laughs> enough segments to rattle for the first time it oh was that's high so cool rattle. Yeah, but now they're totally accustomed to humans because they've been with us since day one. Uh, but yeah, we we went to San Francisco and took the Venomous Training and Handling course through Sa the Save the Snakes Foundation to help us become familiarized and become confident and manage our hot species in a safe way. And we did that right before we opened our zoo and got our timber rattlesnake. So it worked out pretty well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Right. You guys also have a, a beautiful gator at the place, if I remember right. We do. Oh, we Rex. have an American alligator named Rex. She is 37 this year, I believe. Wow. Sounds right. I think around there. Yeah, she's getting up there in age because average lifespan for an alligator is 30 to 50 years. So 
with her past being stunted and all, who knows how long we'll have her, but hopefully for a while yet. Yeah. Um, how does she behave with you? Is she she a good a good good gator? She is definitely a wild animal. They can be socialized if they're raised right, but she was not. So she's a territorial alligator, but we have, you know, a mutual respect for one another, I would say. Yeah. And that's we all we need. We tried putting another alligator in with her. Not at the zoo. A long zoo. time a ago. A long time ago when she was still in our basement at her old house. Um, but she tried to eat it and it was mm. about the same size as she was. So, mm. so it didn't work. Right. So that's why she lives alone. But she honestly, I think, enjoys watching our zoo visitors just as much as they enjoy watching her. Like she interacts with people. She pretends oh, that's to like. Cool. Yeah, she'll playfully snap at kids from behind the glass because she knows she gets a reaction from them on the other side. So playfully, she's like, oh, like, deeply desiring to eat them, but it's fine. Playfully, <laughs> and if I remember right, uh, when I was there before the zoo opened, you can crawl underneath and like pop up in a little dome, right, and like watch her or something. Watch them. You can. It's like a little pop up. Yeah, exactly, a pop up dome, so it can feel like you're in the exhibit with her. And sometimes she'll walk up to the dome, and you can see her very closely. I think current record of people in the dome, because you can like squeeze kids in there. And sometimes I'll count heads, see how many kids are in it. And the current record is seven kids or five slightly intoxicated employees. So that's <laughs> where we're at. I like right. that. So basically me and me and Chase and Patrick and Joe and Sheena and Lisa, and uh, we all got to try to see if we could squeeze in there sometime. Are we doing a road yes. trip to Minnesota? Well, Minnesota? it's not a road trip for me. Uh, Minnesota. Pretty, pretty close. Yeah, yeah, so if I can get you guys to come up to Iowa, we could take a road trip up to these guys. I mean, I do enjoy visiting Canada, so that's fine. We're essentially Canada. Yeah. Exactly. Minnesota. Yeah, you're just Wait, southern Patrick, Canada. What did you yeah. go get? Okay, so it's a little embarrassing, but here's the deal. I completely Y'all were talking that. about this thing that y'all hide. My wife and I also have something. It's a really weird like fertility turtle that's like creepily holding an egg. That my wife absolutely hates and i will hide i will put it in places and then she finds it and hides it from like to make it so i can't find it she successfully hit at this point to where i can't oh. find it um and i just woke her up um and she was very angry at me for waking her up so i just walked away um anyway so, oh, no. yeah she's so angry guys y'all have no idea um so i will uh I will find it tomorrow when she's not as angry at me and I will post it on Instagram and I'll send y'all a picture so you can see it, but it is okay. very creepy. Um, but it's funny cause y'all brought that up and I'm like, Oh, we do that same thing. And uh, yeah, my wife doesn't enjoy this game at all. It's just me. Yeah. Chase, do you hide, do you hide from, do you ever try to get rid of Abby's cats or what do you do? What do you and Abby oh, do? Absolutely. With? No, the cats are like hanging out in the office with me half the time now. Like yeah. they, they like me more. So if I'm trying to like, paint miniatures or something they're trying to sit on me and hang out while i'm trying to do stuff so if i told Lisa, there now. Uh, oh he's got both cats in there right now aren't they are they at your heels right now uh no they were well one of them is one's asleep uh if you i know. tried to have a fun cute game with lisa it i, I could see that conversation me being like Lisa, I want to do something cute like let's hide something from one another and like when you find it it's like a cute <clears> reaction or something she would just be like she would look at me, she would look at the ground, she'd look back at me, and she'd go, no, that's stupid. Yeah, but that's the th – Troy, you I don't can, – I can hear you. her voice say that, though. Yeah, that's absolutely. I can absolutely hear Lisa's voice say that. But you're not supposed to talk about it. It's something that just happens naturally. Yeah, you can't – No, things don't the happen. Deal. Nothing happens naturally at my house other than one time 22 years ago. <laughs> um, other than that, no natural mm -hmm. anything. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to scoot on past oh, that God. comment. One yeah. time. So I'm going to ask you guys, for the shows, when did you start um, doing, like, the themes? And so, what, what brought that on? For like, Because at one point, I was just like, there's, there's, like, a lot of pirates in this snake show. What's going on right now? So that started back when I think we were just about to reach 2 million subscribers. It's during COVID. Yeah, well, it was right before COVID. So we told our uh, our fans that, okay, if we hit, well, okay, sorry, a little bit backstory. A fan had sent us a unicorn onesie that fit me perfectly in our fan mail. We opened it up and we said, okay, if we hit 2 million subscribers by the next Tinley show, I will wear this to the Tinley show. Because I don't know, we were a couple hundred thousand away or something yeah. like that. But then Tinley hit, or sorry, Tinley, not like COVID, COVID hit. COVID hit so by the time there was another Tinley, we oh. had met 2 million <laughs> subscribers. And we we're like, well, shoot, that was the deal. I can't not, you know, 
play this out. Yeah, and then some amazing fan went, well, Emily can't be alone. Ed, here's a onesie for you as well. Yes. <laughs> so then we're like, oh no, we don't want to be the only ones at Tinley <laughs> wearing <laughs> unicorn onesies. So what if we invited our fan base, our amazing, amazing fan base, to join us so we don't feel alone. And we're like, well, maybe if we had an incentive, like a limited edition pin of, you know, the pin design was a hog nose wearing a onesie, a unicorn onesie, because that's what we were wearing. The first 100 people, 100 people to wear a onesie of any kind and find us at the show would get one of the pins. And we were expecting maybe like five or six people to do it. But oh my gosh, there was a wave of onesies. <laughs> it felt like an anime convention that it was. Yeah, I remember amazing. that certainly. Uh, yeah, it was a furry convention, is what ended up 100%. happening. It was like, out of control. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty it, funny, like, to have people at your table and, like, you kind of watch them, like, look over their shoulder. And then finally they'll be like, do you know why all these kids are in onesies? <laughs> or, like, why are all these people in ties? And, and, and then I have to explain it, right? And they have no idea, you know. And, but you can see, like, the, the bulb go off, like, oh, how cool, you know? And so, yeah, it is, it is really neat that you guys do that. For, for just, October Tinley, you could do a cool sports jacket theme. Oh my just God. saying. Subtle. Boy, at Subtle. every moment, he's got to get something in there. Yeah, wow. Uh, well, I think for that show, the onesie show, there was a vendor who was wearing a zebra onesie to help yeah, promote, right. like, Adam Chesla. Yeah, Adam Chesla. Yeah, 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 yeah. So was, everybody thought he was in on it and like a huge yeah. thanks to every fan because he was wearing a onesie, but it was for something completely unrelated. Yeah, yeah. there was a, a relatively new ball python morph called zebra, zebra and he was trying to push the zebra morph and so he wore it and it just like tied together. It was really like fantastic. Love it. Yeah. Uh, do y'all have what's, a theme what's been, uh, what's for... What's your guys' favorite theme? Oh, sorry, Patrick, go ahead. I was just going to ask, do y'all have a theme for March yet? Yes, it's going to be tie dye. I just got the pin design actually in uh, oh. my inbox. Uh, yeah, okay. so anything tie dye, all over tie dye would be awesome. So Troy, oh. if you have any tie dye, suits, yes. I uh, come on, way to put it back on Troy. That's what we want. Yep. I think, we uh, I, think I think the Chimera lanyards are going to be tie dye this go around, guys. Mm. Uh, I'm go. gonna I'm gonna definitely grab on Jill's coattails. So just get ready for a little extra weight there. Do it. <laughs> our favorite though, our favorite theme. <laughs> I had I had fun with the mustache theme, like the fake mustaches. That was, oh, yeah. That was kind of cool. The downside to that one was uh, people would wear the mustache to get the pin and then take it off right away. Oh, we kind of boo. Want, yeah, right. And I understand. It's kind of an embarrassing thing to wear at a convention. <laughs> but we want to encourage people to wear something that they have to wear throughout the show so that if they see somebody else in a pirate costume, they know that's another Snake Discovery fan. So it's kind of like a networking event at that point. Yeah. Okay. I what like that. That's awesome. I don't know. Maybe the onesie, honestly, because it was like surprising to us, like mm. just coming out of the blue, just like so many, like a wave mm. of people all in onesies. And it, we've been trying to chase that. It like, was the it was the most apparent of all of them so far. Yeah, like that like was yeah. weird hats, you know, ties, you know, it's just not as like onesie is like the whole thing. So, and it's people had to wear it the a entire time or else they were center, walking around in their underwear. And you're wearing ones, onesies. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. You said people walking around in their underwear? <laughs> well, if you're not wearing it, oh. those things are hot, Patrick. We you, were. I, I had to peel mine off me at the end of the convention. Oh, gross. It was gross. I think we threw them oh, away oh. afterwards. Wait, you didn't like auction that off for like game used memorabilia? Come on, you Ed. should have. Absolutely. That is nice. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, Troy's showing a picture of a, a tie dye suit on his screen. That is perfect. You need oh, to yeah. have it right now. Maybe, maybe I'm going to have to uh, get Ed one as well or something. Me and Ed can match. Oh, my God. Go. This is so good. I like how we're we're just co-oping this. It's fine. It's no big deal. It's good. It's uh, good. That's I would, awesome. I would have to agree with Epic Style in the comments, though. The Where's Waldo was a lot of fun, too. Just yeah. seeing the red and white oh, stripes throughout the convention. Sure. Center, yeah. That was a good one. I just couldn't find anyone that one, though. It was really weird. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was better than how, that, how guys. Far, uh, Come on. That was good. How far ahead you guys plan those? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Sometimes it's last minute. Sometimes However long it takes late. to get pins made. Um, mm. yeah. So thankfully, we have an artist who can get the, the design done within like 24 hours. So if we put it off too long, we decide like six weeks before the show. But we try right. to plan further ahead than that. Yeah, nice. Okay. 
that's pretty that's pretty awesome i do enjoy uh you guys bringing that excitement to the shows and and not a lot i mean on that same note like i've said this i think to you guys before and, and i've certainly said it at my booth to people like you, you guys are really you know moving a younger generation towards all of us right like it, it, you're you're getting kids excited about uh about this industry whether it's snakes or or lizards or whatever like uh do you, do you know how much of a, a part you are in that I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm, I'm just happy when people want to watch our videos in all honesty. And well, if it happens to start a new generation, that's great. That's the thing for us. Like we see it from the outside, from just like seeing the line of people to come see you and like taking up so much of the show. And it's so awesome to see because, you know, you guys really are like laying that groundwork for the next generation to come up and enjoy that. And you're teaching it in such a manner <clears throat> so professional and but like about the animal care. So but it's cool awesome. too because it's not just the next generation. It's also so. So when I was in grad school, I had a friend who started watching y'all's videos. She was not a reptile person at all. Like, and the only thing she knew about reptiles was that I bred snakes. And she started watching y'all because I had said something about the NARBC and she looked it up and that was one of the ones y'all were at. And she's watching y'all and like she fell in love with like lizards from this whole thing. And like, now she has like a colony of crested geckos at her place. And it's like turning this whole thing. So it's not just like the young people. I think like it's, it's bringing just people into the industry, into the hobby in general. I think it's a huge reach. So it's pretty awesome. We do. We try to pick, I guess, subjects that apply to a large audience, whether it be just uh, something related to care or health or conservation so that, I don't know, we try to grasp as many people's attention as we can, I suppose. <clears throat> but our our most popular videos are the egg cutting videos. And those are very exciting. And baby yeah. videos. And baby videos, yep. Yeah. But our and our least popular videos are the truly educational ones, like <clears throat> the how-tos, which of we course. still want to do those, though, because that's the whole point of the channel is teaching yeah. people. So we try to sneak those in between the fun ones to <laughs> trick people into learning about reptiles. I love nice. that. You, uh, Emily, do you remember the date of your very first YouTube video? I, January 2015. It, yeah, January 2015. It should have been around there, I guess. Well, um, I don't know the exact date or what it was. Was it a snake shedding? I think. Well, I guess the first one was in 2014. You just uploaded something on YouTube, which was the snake shedding. But the first, you set a, a New Year's resolution to do a video a week for a whole year. So that would have been when I see snake discovery truly starting. Huh. All right. How's that so going for y'all? We'd have a, a 10 year anniversary or something to, to YouTube. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's what we'll have to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. be the, the 10 year. Man, has it already been 10 years? 2025. It's getting there. That's crazy. Now wow. I don't even know. We're going to look at our own channel. Maybe it was It was later than that. I could have swore we were only doing this for like five, six years. Ed said, Ed said 2015 with so much confidence. There was no question yet, though. That's I'm true. I'm myself. And now he's checking. <laughs> oh yeah, you can sort from oldest first. Seven years ago. Seven years, so 2017. Okay. Oh. Way off, wow, you weren't even so close, 18. Ed. Sorry. Way don't trust me. But you know what? It was the it's confidence getting worse. you brought to it. <laughs> yeah. We would have went with it. If you say things really yeah. confidently, <laughs> everybody believes you. It, it's mostly true. It, it's worked <laughs> for the most part. Until Emily runs you over with the bus and is like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> so so point for. Yep, yep. Yeah. Ed, Emily, do you guys have a, a favorite animal uh, at the zoo or home? What's your favorite? My favorite animal of all of ours is actually not a reptile at all. It's our blue and gold macaw. So it's, I got into birds first before reptiles, and I've known this macaw, Cheyenne is her name, for I've, I've had her longer than I've known Ed. So she and I have a very close bond. But when it comes to reptiles, I think my favorite has got to be just a plain old albino hognose snake named Charlotte. We've had her for a while. I don't know. I just really like her. All right. Ed? Mm. I like Kronk, the green tree. Okay. He was my first captive bred, you know, U.S. captive bred green tree. Um, he's really cool. He's dumb as hell. I don't feel so Ed's bad anymore. His own rules. <laughs> <laughs> I caught it. We just moved to PG-13, boys. <laughs> nice. Um, but he, he's, he's really cool. All right. Uh, other than that, I mean, Rex is like, I wish we could work with Rex more. We, the way we built her enclosure, it's four feet off the ground. So you have, and then you have to crouch when you get in there. It's only like a uh, nine foot enclosure. So you have about five feet to work. So you're kind of hunched over working with her. 
Mm. Which right. dealing with an alligator is not the best thing to do. So we haven't been doing a whole lot of work with her. Um, but when she was at our house, we were able to work with her better with uh, target training and stuff like that. Um, so I do miss that. And I hope we can eventually get to a point where we can get her into an enclosure that we can work with her again. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Can, Emily, can you bring the bird on screen? I can if you want me to, sure. Oh, absolutely. All right. I don't want to be that person who's like, look at this animal. And pay attention to this animal all the time. Yeah, let me grab her. Oh, I'm excited. I was just it's, yeah. to get All right, now we've got the show here. We've yeah, got perfect. now yeah. we have the show. This is good. Can Ed, I go with her? <laughs> You're supposed to be recording her right now. Everything is content, Ed. <laughs> yeah. Everything is content. Ed, Ed, uh, is that the only bird you guys have? Yes. Uh, okay. My blue and gold that I got when we met, um, when we moved out, she became my parents' blue and gold. And then just as they got older and re retirement age, they just couldn't take care of him anymore. It just kind of became too much of a hassle. So we ended up rehoming him. So okay. yeah, she's the only blue and gold, or the only bird we have right now. But yeah. we are thinking about getting a young uh, macaw, another one, just to okay. get baby fever. We uh, to have, have a bird grave. for the rest of yeah. your life. Yeah, we've had an African grave uh, from back at our pet store, oh. which was 20, 23 years ago. So, yeah, it's cool. To it's neat that it seems like really part of the family because this bird's been around for so long. It's older than our son, right? So, like, yeah, I totally get it. She she looks really not pretty. I you had an African gray. I do, yeah. I love birds, man. I, so, it's funny. I have a love-hate. Like, uh, I love them. I'm absolutely terrified of anything that can fly. Um, <laughs> and so... So it's weird. <laughs> uh, it's it's a weird. It's also horses, man. I think horses are the most majestic animal on the planet. I am terrified of them. Well, that's understandable. Man. They're huge and they can do some damage. Horses yeah. are also dumb. Yeah, horses <laughs> are really dumb. I mean, you know, they took out Superman, so I I stay a healthy distance away from them. That's oh, this bird is so pretty. So does yeah. she does she talk a lot? Is she pretty active? She says hi, hello, and step up, and that's it. So macaws aren't really known for their talking ability a whole lot, but, and she's, she's very naked because she plucks her feathers. So she's a rescue. Oh. She picked up the plucking ah. habit from her previous home. She can sneeze on command. Cheyenne, ready? Bless you. Oh, now she's just excited because she's never been here before. Can you say oh. step up? Oh. If we wait for it, she'll say it. Say step up. Step up. There it is. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. That <laughs> that's great. Yeah. That's like does the she... only thing she can do on command <laughs> and sneeze. Does she, does she screech or anything? She's the quietest bird I've ever had. And I've had, you know, I had parakeets and then cockatiels. Then I had a Congo African gray and a couple other macaws. And then we just have had her long term because she's very right. easygoing. She's very quiet. Ah. She gets along with both of us. She's definitely a wo woman's bird. Yep. But Ed bribed her over about four months with same treats. Yes. Yeah. The same, same maneuver. That's good. Can we, uh, can we <laughs> twist your guys' arm and have you guys come out to the LA Pet Expo at the end of end of June? You know, Ramy's doing four shows at once. So the reptile show, uh, the reptile super show, uh, and then he's got a bird show in one building, a plant, a plant in like another building, and uh, aquarium. So fresh and salt water and pond stuff. So. Uh, end of end of Pomona. June. Okay. Pomona. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We we were there not this past January or not this January, but a year ago January. Yep. And there and was the plant, bird, and reptile, reptile shows. Yeah, that was impressive. Mm -hmm. That was really neat how each building has a different theme, but it's all on the same weekend. Yeah, yeah. So again, this June at the end of June. So it'd be fun to have you guys out there with us. So Chase is planning to join us and, and yep. Patrick came this last time. And so uh it's always a good time. It's a good time. That would be fun you, to check out. Yeah. We are adding I'm, California to our show calendar, I guess. We're doing the okay. Sacramento, uh, Sacramento show. show in okay. April and September. So we're going to do like a dress theme and the whole nine yards for that. Now, so if you guys go to a show where you're not doing that or not bending or, or setting up like that, do, can you walk around pretty freely or people recognize you pretty quick and you're in trouble? We just went to the Oklahoma uh, Herbst show. show. And we went on the slower day because it was snowing and we couldn't walk through that show. So it was fun, though. It was, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, we we, we still got to film the video that we needed to. Yes, <laughs> that was the important thing. We were able to film the video. 
but we purposely purposefully went on the Sunday rather than Saturday because there was like a snowstorm on Sunday. So we we're like, oh, that's no big deal for us. So we'll go anyway. Thankfully, it wasn't canceled that day, but it was also very quiet there yep. as far as visitors. But that actually ended up working out great for filming. But even then, it was kind of tough to move around because our what we typically do is I'll talk to fans because I love meeting fans. And then Ed kind of walks ahead and films yep. things. So together, we can get the video done. Yeah. Do you have moments where you like uh, it, it, it's tough to get away and you're trying to you know do biz and stuff? Do you think most people are pretty understanding? I'd say that most. For, yeah, most people are very understanding. We have a very nice audience base. That being said, there's always a couple. There was an instance at Tinley a couple of years ago where I was dumb. I left my I put my phone. Okay, so we finished a meet and greet line. We needed a lunch break, so we grabbed the gifts that fans had given us, which was so nice of them. We walked out to the rental or to our car yeah. and we, I put my phone just on top of the car so that I could use both hands to move the gifts and put them inside. We're also trying to corral three friends yeah. as well. Yep. And so we all hopped in the car, phone was still on the car, drove off. It made it all the way to the hotel right before you turn into the parking lot. So that was kind of impressive, but ended up losing my phone. Someone had picked it up and I was struggling to like cancel cards because yeah. I have a case or had a case that had my cards in it. Mm. Those were gone too, and my IDs. So I was scrambling, and a couple fans were upset that I wasn't meeting their kids during that time when I was trying to cancel my cards. As you yeah. were hiding in one of the bushes on the north side of the building, trying to cancel <clears throat> cards, I ended yeah. up hiding in bushes to to cancel the cards successfully. Uh, it all worked out. Ended up somebody found the phone, turned it into the police, and then we like followed the GPS tracker to a cop car and picked it up. So it worked out great. We <laughs> there was a. Uh, system that Samsung has on their phones where you can sit there and just play the ringtone over and, yeah. over and over and over again. And she had the most... Have you ever heard the Seagull song from... Oh, what's the name of it? Uh, Star Wars? It, Seagull? Uh, the Seagull. Uh, shoot. There's... there's it, The title of the song is Seagulls, and it's like a play off of Star Wars. It's by um, the bad lip-reading people on YouTube. Oh, okay. Uh, but there's a really annoying part in it, and that was her ringtone. Of course. And somebody found her phone and gave it to police officers, and we had tracked it to a certain like parking lot a, at a uh, gas station. And I'm sitting there just hitting it, like yeah. trying to hear it. Like, every five five seconds, I'm like, keep ringing. After about an hour, we found the police officers, and we were just like, yeah, we're looking for a phone. And they're like, oh, that's your phone? We threw it in the trunk because it wouldn't shut up. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing! That's uh, great. But we did find the phone. We got the cards back. Everything. It was. It was all fine. But it was a very stressful day. Oh, yeah, sure. so that was probably the the one time that comes to mind where fans weren't terribly, I guess, accepting of the fact that I yeah. I was preoccupied and I couldn't yeah. meet them. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, everybody in the comments who said what it was. Oh, yes. Thank you, comment section, for the bad lip reading. There's been lots of fun comment stuff. Uh, you know, of course, we have an I love you, Emily, and no, I love you, Ed. But, um, yeah, that's uh, right. you know, maybe it'll, maybe it'll come. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Ed already gets all those from us. So that's yeah, he, yeah. he gets plenty of attention yeah. from, you know, yeah. other people. It's fine. Yeah. I know nice. my people. Ed, I'll bring you a whiskey at Tinley. Perfect. <laughs> that would uh, make his day. Yes. Oh, that would totally would. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> There's typically a couple drinks to be had at the auction yes. after a long day of uh, meet and greet, which is, it takes a lot of energy out of you. Cause you know, you're always on, like I want yeah. hundred percent of my attention on the fan so I can yeah. have a, you know, a conversation. I don't want to look over anything or feel like I'm blowing them off or anything. But at the end of the day, uh, after seven hours of that, it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm really tired. I could just, I just could use a drink to take the edge off, you know? So there's sometimes a flask in my purse at the auctions. Oh. That's usually why I buy whiskey at the auctions. That there is why you can buy a lot of alcohol at the auctions, yes, because then right. you can just drink that right then and there, and it's okay. And here I just thought Ed was an alcoholic. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> makes a lot more sense. Just, just at auctions. Yeah. <laughs> just at auctions. Done, man. Yeah. It's good. I've certainly got to uh, be close by with you guys at an auction and, and certainly have seen you know, the table uh, and, and having a couple bottles of whatnot. And Ed actually bought one that I think I donated, which I thought was yep. pretty neat. So, yeah, yep. That's good stuff. Yeah, I got your hat too. Yeah, nobody wants that. You just wanted the whiskey. I don't even know what it was, to be honest. I think my son <laughs> went and picked it up. I didn't even pay attention to what it was. The hat's you just said that to the guy. Hat. Cool. All I remember is the hat. 
yeah, I don't drink, so I know nothing about alcohol. And so the last time I made my son go, the time before that, I went with Cusco and we picked out some stuff. And then Patrick and I have picked out a couple of things that have been pretty fun at, at the auction. So yeah. that's been a, a fun, a fun thing to do. Yeah, for sure. The auctions are always an adventure. Always. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Emily, you, you know, I have to say, like, uh, you know, Riley was listening earlier, my little friend Riley, and and you got up on stage with her at, at Tinley and uh you know certainly certainly melted my heart i had to be late for dinner patrick yelled at me um because i was enjoying the moment but uh, i have to say you know that's super awesome of you and uh i know she's a huge fan man and just how much you mean to to people like her and Aww. and so i think it's really awesome that you give up you know your time and your personal time to you know do those things so oh they're here uh becca becca Barr is her lovely mother and so uh they are in the comments and i know how much it meant to riley so uh, big thank you from us. Oh, I, we were just impressed that Riley had sold enough snake yeah. shed jewelry that she made to fund their trip to Tinley. And then they went to snake discovery afterwards. It was just incredible what that what she's doing. Like, she's going to go places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then she went to the Mega Mall and fell off of a ride at Nickelodeon Land. Uh, I think that Riley and her mom should, like, sue the Mega Mall or whatever and just rename it, like, Riley's Mall. There you go. That's, That's a perfect Riley plan. World. Riley's mm -hmm. World. Yeah. Riley's World. Yep. Yep. Ed, we but found someone else that loves you. They named their snake after you. There's only a Aww. couple. We found one, though. We're yeah. finding them one at a time. Like I said, there's a handful. Yeah. All the others are like, well, we didn't want to wait in line, so mm -hmm. we saw you. Uh, Emily, quick uh, off track of Troy question. I don't know who all your friends are, and um, I can't necessarily throw myself in here, but I'm going to. If you were at a dinner with like me, Lisa, sheena and joe and you had to kill two of us to save your youtube channel who are the two people you would kill go oh, try well, <laughs> yeah you can't kill sheena she's way too nice can't kill lisa she's way too nice so i guess it's you and you and joe you're going sorry <laughs> all right well at least i get to go with joe i mean we'll go together how would you I kill feel like she'd kill me just for the you know the kicks of it and then they I just didn't want to throw three. I didn't want to throw you in there and I didn't want to I didn't want her to be able to pick you <laughs> <laughs> I would have been um, first I, yeah, know. I know gone. my place yeah that's how, awesome how would we kill Troy oh <laughs> this is getting dark yeah <laughs> no I'm in this I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> Emily's not paying show. attention yeah <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to be sneaky about it so no one would know because that's the last thing people would expect from snake discovery. Well, we can't put you don't eat vegetables, right, Troy? Nope. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we can't put anything in the vegetables because he won't eat them. That's true. So we'd have to go meat based. Yeah. Uh, well, mm. be careful with that too. It's more like cheese pizza or a burger. <laughs> yeah. As far as your chicken people. tenders, you know what you could get him? The brown sugar. <laughs> Because even uh, if he knew it was poisoned, he'd still eat it. <laughs> yes, yeah, I love my brown sugar. It's so good. Listen, I'm taking a probiotic, which I'm sure at least Chase and Patrick will love to hear this. Um, and I have to take it with something. So anyways, when I mix it with, it tastes just like brown sugar. So you're only supposed to take it like once a day. But I, I'm, I'm trying not to. Like I'll see it in the fridge and I'm like. Nope, I can only have it once a day, but I want to like down the bottle of it. <laughs> this is yeah, a prebiotic yeah. is not a snack. Do not overdo yeah. that. <laughs> I love I love that Troy's treating this as like Flintstone vitamins with a kid. <laughs> it tastes so good. I just want to eat a whole bottle. Uh, no. dude, I, could, I ate a whole box of yeah of Flintstone kids vitamins when I, most of these people don't even know what those are, man. I'm old. Oh, um, oh I every, was morning. Raised, um, every morning. Yeah, vitamins. they're still a you thing, know, man. They're they still were a probably thing. changed from like my childhood to your guys' childhood. They like ours were literally just color candied, like sugar dyed, whatever. They weren't really vitamins. <laughs> There's some minerals in there now. Yeah, yeah. red number five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, Troy, hold on. This is a big moment. This yeah, is like is some self. Right this is some self care. This is some yeah, self help. I I feel what, really what good. Happened? Um, I haven't had like any irritable bowel syndrome moments. I'm sure everybody wants to hear about that, but why not tell the 150 <laughs> people listening? Um, and so, uh, hey, yeah, we've been over stuff. 150 people. That's a big deal. Once again, yeah. Hooray! Anyway, that's awesome, yep. man. That's exciting. That's yeah. fantastic. It's good Maybe stuff. what are the chances we get you to like jog a little? Mm. <laughs> okay, mm. well, baby steps, baby steps. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a long walk together. We'll see what happens. Maybe okay. me and Ed, Ed, if me and Ed, can I go running with Ed? Just me and Ed do a little run. Sure. Yeah. All right. I, I'm not going to tell y'all no. I think running is great. 
You can join okay. him at the gym. Yeah. 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 What do you do at the gym? What's What's Emily and Ed's workout routine? I typically, I typically do like forty minutes on an elliptical and then various weightlifting. Yeah, I do rows for about twenty minutes and then fifteen twenty minutes on the stair stepper and then switch between arms and legs. Just so you know, An Chase hour. is judging you both right now. No. <laughs> Chase doesn't judge. No. I no. Do Chase, is that a good enough workout for them? What do you it's think? Solid workout. Yeah. They're doing something. That's the so important part, get, Troy. Do something. Get, get up and do something. You're going to get turned back on me. I should have just got out of this. Stuff yeah, you should have really quickly. You try anything just to get you to do something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, We've had a couple of interventions for Troy on the show. He just doesn't listen. <laughs> no. And I'm glad this is this is where we're going with this one now. So and, it, and if I bring you guys a ba a bag of brown sugar to Tinley, will you eat brown sugar with me? Sure. Oh my god. I got no problem with that. What if all of your followers bring a bag of, uh, for both of us of brown sugar? So you don't want that like much brown couple, sugar. Like, <laughs> like a couple hundred bags of brown sugar. I would I'm, take a couple. Yeah, I would love for you to get pulled over <laughs> and the officer just be like, oh. What's going on back here? It's like, don't worry. It's just but, brown sugar. But I like how Troy is like co oping their fan base to get brown sugar for life. Yeah. He's like, you know what would be really funny, guys? <laughs> is if your fans brought all the brown sugar. All of it. <laughs> never, yeah, it's part. Not only do you have to wear tie dye, but you have to bring brown sugar to get a pen. And all of the followers <laughs> are leaving, Troy. I hope you're happy. They're all we just ending this. Do you want that much brown sugar, Troy? Oh my God. I mean, look at me. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> horrible all right oh let's get god. the show back on track what are you no talking more brown about sugar talk <laughs> you bring uh, it up every show it's not like yeah. we're off track at some point <laughs> okay. you want, like i could bring up talking about molly or something and st that sounds bad that sounds like no. a drug yeah Jesus that's sister's like name is molly no, we're not. It's a PG episode. We're not doing this. No, we already said don't breed snakes and do drugs. Like that's been established already. Yeah, we're not yes. doing that. Yeah, it's gonna no. be. That's not a snake discovery shirt. I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> so, Troy, do you just take spoons of brown sugar? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're gonna say this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> like he just. I mean, it out of the bag. Each their own. Uh, Lisa the other day was in the cupboard to like make something cookies or something. And she pulled the brown sugar bag out and my spoon was still in the bag, which I rarely do. <laughs> and she just like looks at me and like holds it. And she's like, why is this in the bag? And I was like, it just seems easier to leave the same spoon in there. Like, why would I, why can't I just use the same spoon? Well, I'm because the, the spoon is it. wet now and the sugar's going to yeah. stick. No, that's no, gross. No, 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 I'm not that weird, dude. I rinse it off and I just wipe it off and I stuck it back oh, in the bag. I'm sorry. He's classy about it, Patrick. Calm down. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. I'm the one being weird. I'm sorry. Do so you prefer light brown sugar or the oh. dark brown sugar? Ed with the real questions tonight. Yeah, that's a good question. Ed, I actually can't taste the difference. Oh. oh. But I guess I've never had them straight, so I guess I'm sure well, you know well, what I have. <laughs> <laughs> Troy's like, I am an expert, and let me tell you, it's all just marketing. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, I tell you. Well, no since good. we've since we've all decided this is the topic, um, Troy, how long have you been doing this? I was trying to get back to the comments and our questions so that we could get away from no a half hour talk about Troy eating brown sugar. I like the brown sugar talk. <laughs> yeah, no, this is good. <laughs> how I long have you changed the name of the podcast? Uh, I've been doing sugar? this for probably I'm 45, so 30, probably 35 years. Oh my God, Troy! What was the what? first thing that got you to eat brown sugar straight? There it is. Yeah, my mom handing me brown sugar. But what? No. There, there, that I was. Remember, it. I can remember kind of like as a kid, like in the kitchen, and so brown sugar, like you know, like so it like caramelizes or like crystallizes yeah. in the bag. It's like a little hard ball or something. Yeah. She handed me one, and like while making cookies, and after that, dude, it was a done deal. <laughs> Your wife create your your mom created an addict for life with one brown sugar yeah. rock. That's perfect because yeah. Ed's mom would bake cakes for a living, so you got to taste all sorts of cake oh, yeah. scraps. Oh, that bread. sounds so great! That yeah. was oh. like you you know when cakes have to be perfectly flat, you cut off, and then you have a bunch of leftover cake, and then you know, yeah, you eat yeah. a lot of cake. 
Hey man, sometimes when I get cake, sometimes I cut half of the cake off so there's more frosting to cake ratio. <laughs> Listen, I was thinking about this today. I was like, I wonder, we talk about Troy snack habits a lot on this show. Like, I wonder if on Instagram I could put like Troy snack of the week, right? Like today I had graham crackers with Hershey bars, but it's not just cut and dry. You have to take like the Hershey bar and like turn your stovetop on and like just hover the Hershey bar on top of it for a little bit till it's not melting. But instead of it being like hard and breaking, it like kind of has a little bit of give to it, right? And then you put it on the graham cracker and then another graham cracker. And it's like the best little sandwich ever. So you uh, don't throw a marshmallow in there? Okay. Yeah, I was about to say. Uh, only, only, yeah, only in the summer, but winter time, no marshmallows. <laughs> I uh, would love this, Troy. You should make this yeah, a thing. You should I ask, uh, Troy, do you want to tell us about how you pick out your Reese's pieces, your Reese's cups? Oh, boy. I'm, listen, I apologize to all the viewers that this has turned to Troy's whatever. <laughs> um we have this Nathan guy. He's yelling at me on in here. Uh, he, I think he just called me a retard. Um, <laughs> whoa, hey. Nathan! Oh. This is twenty twenty four. Nathan, Nathan. On, Nathan. Yeah. Nathan. Yeah, don't be so mean to me. Um, oh. I still love you. I'm giving you a hug virtually. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, uh, Reese's. You, yeah, Reese's. Oh, Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. So when you grab a thing of Reese's. Uh, when you push on, if you push on and you feel like a really good give, then they're like really good and fresh. They're like squishy. Like that's, that's when they're good, man. But you get one a little hard, you break them open, they're stale. Like I throw those right out the window. I do too. So occasionally we'll get fan mail that's already expired candies. And like, I will learn, don't poop on the floor. Oh, oh she that's a bird. That's oh. what birds do. Uh, that's the gonna worst. be great. Okay. Anyway, yeah. that's my fault for putting you on the back of the chair. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so yeah, people have sent ex already expired snacks before. So I learned the hard way with Reese's peanut butter cups specifically. You open them up, you take a bite, and it's that chalky peanut butterness on the inside. It's like, oh, that's that's a no go. They have to be fresh. Yeah, they gotta be fresh. Yeah. See, Emily wow. knows. The bad thing though is Emily's a hundred pounds of you know beautifulness and I'm a fat piece of shit. <laughs> oh my God. No, you're beautiful hey, too, Troy. Hey, you hold are. on. That's number three. Okay. I definitely don't you feel said, bad. We're PG 13. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Oh, don't swear. Oh, I, and don't make loose. fun of yourself. You should learn to love yourself, kids. Because <laughs> if you don't love yourself, how do you expect other people to love you? Mm -hmm. Important. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. Uh, Joe, Joe, Nathan nation. I would love to, uh, ask you, help you with your question, buddy, but your question is really hard to answer, um, about your corn snake and it having internal parasites when, you know, none of us are really a vet. You should probably just take it to a vet. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. We're not licensed vets, so we can't give veterinarian <laughs> advice for legality reasons. Yep. Also, maybe don't call people idiots on a live stream. That'll probably also help us answer your questions, but it's fine. You know, it's neither here nor there. It's cool. Yeah. Where did she land? I don't know. No good. Oh, uh, did she just fly away? Yeah. Well, yeah. I threw her, so she usually flies to her stand, but she disappeared this time. So I have to figure out where Cheyenne landed and put her on her stand. Quick. You're you're fine. Yes. Go yeah. take care of your bird. Yeah. Perfect. The show just got better again. It's weird. I don't understand. <laughs> okay. We love we're, you. We're, we're now clowns now. So uh, clearly, I see, oh, I see that. We all, we all don't manage. You know. It's a. It's okay. It's okay. We don't need to. Uh, we don't need to acknowledge anymore. It's fine. Yeah. This is oh, good. I'm just making big thumbprints and stuff here so i like it yeah i like yeah. it uh ed what um, did you expect when we asked you to come on uh this i don't know okay yeah i i honestly the whole time emily talked she was just like troy's we're going on troy's podcast so i heard was that like, what <laughs> yeah i just want to make sure they heard that that it's troy's <laughs> podcast <laughs> so so I was just like, okay, cool. We're going to hang with Troy. And then we looked it up and we're like, oh, Patrick's on this too. And some guy we don't know. <laughs> oh, some guy some we guy don't know. know. That's great. That makes me that's, so that's happy great. still. Thank you so much for that <laughs> gift. The first interview well, that Ed gave Troy for this episode. That that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to like, we get Justin in your spot and I can't wait for Emily to be like, who's that guy? I'm ready and for it. Just, just oh, it'd be great. Yeah, I did see a question yeah. in the comments. I'd have to scroll up to figure out 
Who asked Emily's putting it? us back on track. I'm trying to put us back on track. Okay, so That's Leviathan good. Snakes asked, uh, once the brown sugar talk is done, what's the most difficult aspect of running snake discovery? Oh, Courtney, oh, Stephen, back question. off. We don't want to ask these questions, Stephen. Or is it Courtney? Yeah. I don't know which one of you asked it. It's definitely it. Courtney, but that's a good yeah. question. Fine. I, I think we're probably on the same page on that one. I just love the fact that you just brought us back into a podcast. Was I not supposed to? <laughs> no, you're fine. Oh, no. Emily's, Emily's like, y'all, the shenanigans are too much. We're done with real yeah. sugar, and let's ask her real questions. Yes, yes. <laughs> Except for, for Joe, because we don't like him now. Except for well, Joe, yeah. I deleted, not I deleted him. He's he's no longer around. Wait, no. What are you him. doing? I was looking forward to more comments from him. Nope. I blocked I, and deleted him. He's got to go. Perfect. Did yeah. you delete him? I wanted to go look through all of his comments. Sorry. Oh, now I'm upset with you, Troy. Yeah. Continue. It's better that way. Yeah, it's probably a good decision to have done that. Yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> all right, let Emily answer her question. I apologize. Oh, well, I was just, I mean, okay. Thomas part of our earnings next discovery. Uh, Probably trying to spin all the plates at once. Yeah. Because there's so many different moving pieces. I'm going to say employees. That is one of the plates. <laughs> so, How many employees do you have? 18, I think. Wow. Something like that. We recently hired a general manager to help take care of day-to-day -day stuff. So we're not focusing ourselves on day-to-day -day problems and putting out fires. And because of that, we're struggling to film videos on time. Uh, so we just want to be able to, I guess, have a little bit more free time to yeah. enjoy the filming process a yeah. bit more. So hopefully yeah. general manager that uh, fits in well. He yep. seems to be fitting in yep. well. And, uh, nice. Yeah, hopefully it helps. Do you guys have a favorite employee? Well, in case anyone's listening, we can't say that. Uh, they're like uh, children. You love them all for we different do. reasons. <laughs> all right, it's like we I do. Like but like last, week, last week, Justin just came right out. He's like, no, it's Greg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Greg cleans the rat room. We we're gonna love him the most. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do y'all do y'all um do y'all breed any rodents or is everything frozen thawed for the most part? No, we have a we have a breeding room. We have okay. three racks, three breed and breeder racks for rats, and one rack of mice, and then yeah. two overstock or grow yep. out racks. Uh, we want to be able to breed more, so we're working on that to hopefully expand rodent <clears> breeding <throat> in the future. But for now, it's you know it, we breed what we can fit in a. 10 by 10 foot room, yeah, yeah. something like that. Okay. Not, Small scale. Yeah. It's not enough to keep up with demand for our customers, but we supplement with JSA rodents who Troy knows JSA. They're a local yeah. breeder yeah. here in Minnesota. Awesome people. They have really high quality rodents. So we're happy to supplement with theirs. Yeah. So help meet demand basically. That was um, nice of you to say something nice about Joe and at JSA because I typically don't. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I had to make up I for the fact that I chose I to, out of the four to kill him and Troy. I had to say something uh, nice to make up for that. No, that's fair. <laughs> I I really like um this comment from All Things Alligator and Copy Common Snapping Turtles. They said Snake Discovery, do more videos on common snapping turtles and maybe consider adding an alligator snapping turtle to your zoo. There's no bias there, right? Like literally no. none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's good. You got can, can we add a, a snap alligator snapper to the zoo? We can't as it currently is because there's no yeah. room, but in the future, we would like to, if we could expand or have the opportunity to do something different and bigger, maybe, um, you know, hypothetically, it'd be cool to have a common snapping turtle right next to an alligator snapping turtle. Yeah. Like, oh, that'd be cool. That is cool. Oh, go ahead. I was, sorry. I, I was just going to, there was another comment, but finish what you were saying. Sorry. Oh, we were offered a huge albino mm -hmm. alligator snapper in oh. Iowa like a year or two ago. Yep. We just didn't have room for it. It would have been sweet, but we referred them to a friend of ours who took it. So oh, that's Maybe super cool. When we want it, we'll just steal it from him. Yeah. Um. All right. So, actually, like this question: uh, What's a dream animal you don't have? Mm, that's a good question. That is a good question. I don't know. We recently got the Lucister cognos that I wanted, and the indigos, and the eastern indigos. Those are a lot of fun. I think someday, I don't know if I'll ever have the guts to get one because it's a non-native venomous snake. But a spiny bush viper would be really cool. Eyelash viper. Or a variable bush oh. viper, sorry. I can um, see it. Yeah, maybe someday. Yeah. But <laughs> since they're exotic, the anti-venom is difficult to come by. Yeah. It'd be a shame when Ed got bit. So. Yeah. 
Pete, Chris, uh, Chris, our buddy from uh, Epic Style, brought up you. Know, you guys do your build off, so you said you know it's Troy and Patrick and Chase going to do the next build off. Can you can you walk us through the build off uh, deal? That's always a neat a neat thing you guys do. Sure, do you want yeah. to like talk about how we do it? Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, so yeah, we just kind of pick uh, ten different people who all have some kind of channel or affiliation. media affiliation. And bring them to us, and we do a day competition where they get to uh, build an enclosure, and then the uh, people watching the videos can choose who wins, essentially. Yeah, so for the first three years, we've had 10 contestants each time. We start the day with like a Survivor-style challenge, because Ed and I used to be huge fans of the TV show Survivor. So if you won the challenge, you got like an advantage, like first pick of the from the cornucopia of donated products for your build. But essentially, everybody's building a four by two by two foot enclosure. Yep. And this is because of that, and because it's our viewers who vote on the <clears> favorite, <throat> it is kind of biased or subjective based on what the viewer thinks is the best, whether that's functionality yeah. or just the prettiest enclosure. Or but, if you have the most subscribers. Or if you have the most subscribers, that plays a big part of it too. Uh, so we try to encourage everybody to not treat it like a popularity contest, like, hey, just because you follow this person's channel, don't necessarily vote for them if you think this enclosure was built. Anyway, we try to make it as even as we can, but we took the top three players or top three places, I guess, from the first three years. And this year we're going to put them all together. The best of the best. This is going to be the championship round for the build off. And we have a couple twists involved for the championship. Nice. It's a little more difficult. So it's going to be pretty fun. That's cool. cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 I, if, if you guys did invite me once, which I was very honored and I couldn't make it, but if I ever get invited again, and I and I can come. There needs to be brown sugar in that box. <laughs> You'll just be in the corner scooping out brown sugar for the full six hours. Yeah. Oh my, oh my god. I made a box. That's, Put the empty a, wrappers in the enclosure. I made a box and it's full uh, of brown sugar wrappers. <laughs> I love it. I'm I in. think that would work. Yeah. I'd I'd vote for that. We should do like a breeders like that'd be cool. Version of it. Oh. Yeah. All like yes. medium to large scale snake breeders. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Sorry, Chase, you're not going to be in there. They don't know who you no, are. No, they don't know who you are. They're too small. <laughs> Sorry. Not for startups. Bum. Yeah. I'm going to keep selling both of you animals. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> That's fine. I'll keep sending you all animals. So it's fine. It always works out well for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right. Is there anything else specifically we want to talk about? Because I feel like we're getting close to the end. Yeah. So that's, is there anything else? We have, we have a bunch of ducks in the comments. Yeah, yeah I know. We have a duck, duck, goose or something going on. I, yeah. yeah. It's not duck, duck, goose. It's duck, duck, gray duck. Come on, guys. She's weird. That's the Minnesota weird. thing. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, all right, uh, so we normally end these things with a chat GPT story. What's today's topic going to be? This is going to suck. <laughs> wow. What do we want to do? So you ask chat GPT to write a story about they're, blank? Yeah, they're, yeah, just whatever. We're just going to, it's like Mad Libs, but you know, with chat GPT, it's good. Um, let's see. Mima's playing hide and seek in a grocery store. Hmm. That was fast. How about we you do this? Try to make it something embarrassing, like Troy right. gets lost trying to get Ed's autograph at the snake show. Oh, oh I see. A make funny story. Okay. Oh, absolutely. It's got to be personalized. All right, so okay, maybe okay. We, we can run with that. Write a funny story about Troy trying to get Ed's autograph. It's got to end with us both eating brown sugar. Emily knowing. Uh, um, there we go. I don't know if you hmm. see this comment, Emily, but uh, Riley thinks that we should do a breeder and a kid reptile fan team builder challenge. <laughs> oh, so a breeder paired up with a kid fan. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be a neat way to make it a little there bit different one year. Okay, we'll have to we'll have to bank that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I like the idea. Mm -hmm. Y'all keep vamping for a minute. I'm working. You're working. Okay. All right. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a lovely uh, story, I'm sure. What, uh, how often you guys are you still doing like birthday appearances and stuff? Is that something you guys are still doing a lot of? 
We do birthday, reptile birthday parties, but only at our facility. We Now that we have full-time educators to do our educational programs, since I don't do them anymore, I, I fill in. I'm like the emergency backup in case somebody calls in sick, but I'm not scheduled to do programs for that reason. But we don't do off-site birthday parties because we don't want to make our educators go into a stranger's house and into their living room to do a birthday party. I had never had issues doing it for the years that I did, but you did bring pepper spray though. I had pepper spray with me just in case, you know, being a female, you know, entering a stranger's house. Uh, but we just don't want to make them even run into that situation or the awkwardness of going into a stranger's house in the first place. So we just do them in house, but we do. Yeah. We have birthday parties three a day. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, right. especially during the summer. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, that's pretty awesome. What does something okay. like that entail? Like, is it, what what do they get? Yeah, so if they book a birthday party at Snake Discovery, it's like a two-hour time block where it includes. I mean, the two hours you have to yourself in the classroom, so you can bring all your cake and presents and stuff. But it includes a half an hour uh, educational program from an educator, and then 15, 20 minutes of just handling reptiles, getting fun pictures with reptiles and going out into our zoo to explore and then coming back and you typically have the last half an hour, 40 minutes for cake and ice cream or presents. So kind of uh -huh. the rest of the time is whatever they want to do with it, but we try to make it a uh, memorable, a memorable experience. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. All mm -hmm. right. Chat GPT has delivered. All right, mm -hmm. let's do this. Don't get so depressed. Yeah. Some of these are good. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like one in ten are good. Uh, but we gotta keep doing this. All right, here we go. At the Snake Discovery Zoo, Troy hatched a plan to get Ed's autograph without Emily knowing. Armed with brown sugar, he laid a sneaky trail from Ed's favorite snake enclosure to a hidden nook. As Ed followed the sweet path, curious yet cautious, Troy crouched behind a giant python statue, pen and paper ready. Just as Ed reached the sugar's end, Troy popped out, startling both Ed and a nearby lizard. Autograph, please, he whispered excitedly. Ed, laughing amidst hissing serpents and a sugar dusting, signed swiftly and ran away. But as they celebrated, a trail of sugar led Emily right to their sugary, snake-filled rendezvous. Here you go. I don't know. I if like that. That, was a... that one was good. <laughs> okay, you're, you're good. <laughs> that was amazing. It made the cut. It made the cut. That's good. That's good. It's better uh -oh. than normally bringing my my uh, my wife down from a stage. That's so. we're not talking about that today. This is G rated, PG rated, yeah. PG thirteen. It escalated quickly. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh I would my like goodness. to say it's pretty neat to see in the comments people from other countries. Like uh, we have somebody from Tasmania and South Africa, and like that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. You know that you you guys have fans all over the world, so that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Canada. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. Have you Canada got a, a gift? Have yes. you got a gift from anybody like overseas? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> very nice of them. Yeah, we've we've gotten gifts from overseas. Usually, like uh, sweets or other foods that yep. represent that country or are like okay. for that country. So it's really cool. We've been able to yeah. buy a lot of foreign sweets. I've had to eat so much Vegemite. It's <laughs> not great. Oh my god, Vegemite is terrible. It is. I'm willing to it's say it's not bad Paul. if you put it on a piece of toast with butter and a like very light dusting of Vegemite. So basically, if you don't have Vegemite, yeah. yeah. So basically, if you don't have Vegemite on there, so <laughs> toast with butter is good. That's, but if you take a spoonful, oh. yeah, that's that's actually how I tried it the first time and mm -hmm. won't fall for that trick again. What's <laughs> not good? Sweet. All right, guys, it's that time. Uh, thank you all so much for coming on. This has absolutely yeah, been a been blast. So um, oh, thank you for, having, for us. having us. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, what's the best way for people to see your content or uh, get a hold of y'all? To see our content, the best way is on YouTube, just Snake Discovery on YouTube. Best way to get a hold of us would be probably info at snakediscovery.com. Cool. I don't answer all the emails myself. We have somebody who helps out with that, but... If it's a question she's able to answer, she will do it. Cool. Awesome. Troy, Chase, anything else y'all yeah, want to add? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. No. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, I certainly enjoy every minute with you guys. I've had some fun dinners, some fun time with you guys, and I look forward to, to more of that. So uh, I'm coming your way February 4th or something. So maybe I can twist your arm uh, into a dinner or something. 
That would be That'd awesome. Be awesome. Mm-hmm. I love it. All right, guys, I'm going to hit the exit video here in a second. If y'all want to stick around for a hot second, and we'll talk to y'all after this. Uh, to everybody that watched the show, thank y'all so much. We loved having y'all. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and uh, hit all the links in the description. It should have everything for us and for Ed and Emily. So till next week, we love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thanks, guys. And we will see y'all.